We're back at Upper Canada College for the second half of today's championship game, the Conference of Independent Schools Athletic Association Senior Football Final. Good afternoon to you. Welcome back. Glad you could join us. Scott Cowie is here alongside of me. My name is David Grossman. Wind is picking up, Scott. Sun is still out. Clouds have all gone. And it's going to be an entertaining second half if we know, as we certainly do, a little bit about what happens when these two schools get together for a football game, particularly a championship. Upper Canada, St. Andrews, the last time they met in the final was four years ago. Upper Canada winning it. St. Andrews badly wants it back. A lot of the players are graduating from both teams. So far, the first half has been a, a story of turnovers, penalties, in favor of Upper Canada and a kid by the name of Rashid Tucker with two touchdowns. And that's what leads 23 to 5 for Upper Canada. You're right, David. And, and the wind may be a factor. Uh, as you said, it has picked up, especially on those punts. And we've seen some overthrown snaps as well, which have uh, had an impact on, uh, on the game for both sides. Wonder what went on if I was a fly in the dressing room of St. Andrews, what their coaching staff. And there is a little bit of a mystery as to why the young man who's helped them throughout the entire year with 45 touchdowns in two seasons hasn't been getting the ball more. We'll see what happens. Kick yep. off the second half underway. Ball caught and dropped, then picked up. And run back in front of the UCC fans just past his 30-yard line. Looks like that was uh, Adam Sellen, who I believe that might have been his first touch of the ball at, uh, at the kickoff receive position. And as you say, managed to make a, uh, a gain out of what could have been a, an unpleasant uh, start to the uh, second half for the Blues. We had an enjoyable chat with Sam McKinney, the principal, 19th principal of Upper Canada at halftime. And he was also relieved to know that his son who's playing didn't sustain a serious injury. He was a little concerned when he was holding his wrist. He thought maybe there was some damage, but he's fine. That's good to hear. Here we go again. Tucker with the handoff. Eludes two defenders, far side of the field. Looks like a nice game. Yeah, the Blues uh, hoping to pick up where they left off and certainly giving the ball to Rashid Tucker. They've seen much success on the last two drives prior to the uh, prior to the break at the half and want to keep that up. Second down, about four for UCC. The second half going from left to right. They're wearing their whites with the navy blue helmets. Williams gets away a pass, hoping for the catch, but it was incomplete. So it sets up a kicking down. St. Andrews in their gray jerseys with the red numbers, red pants, and the silver helmets. Just out of reach there for Juwan Edgehill. He's a very solid receiver and had uh, has had a couple of big plays today. But as you say, UCC two and out to start the second half. St. Andrews has to take some pride in that. We'll want to turn that into uh, into some positive offense as well. Punt is up, far side of the field, takes a bounce, picking it up, and run out of bounds. And David, a little, bit of, a little again, bit of words between players. Yeah, emotions will definitely be high at this point. Uh, and as you mentioned, good to see that Connor McKinney with a very decent punt there to uh, pin the Blues or pin the uh, Saints behind their uh, their 50 yard line and that Connor's not hurt at all. I want to say a big hello to all the Blues fans listening and in to their alma mater graduates also relatives friends parents St. Andrews first down Fake on the first one, handoff second time to Adre Simmons. There's a flag. Preliminary is face mask. We'll see what. 
Yeah, I wonder if that is the call, David. It looks like they are uh, looking to the Blues side as a culprit. Chris Walker, the referee, just been told. Yeah. Unnecessary roughness, big penalty. Something UCC doesn't want to get into in the second half. The booster for St. Andrews moves the chains, moves the ball. And St. Andrews now has a first down on the 49-yard line of UCC with the Blues leading 23-5 nicely into the third quarter of this championship game. Pitch out, McLean. That was a big hit there by number 67, Jose Guerra. On McLean. And uh, the Saints have come out running the ball, David. Well, I would, I would think that they would use the, the size on their offensive line to try get something going on the ground before having to go back to the air and risk the chance of problems they had in that first half. We'll see what happens. With second and long here, though, they may need to go to the air again. There's a flag. Pass is completed to the side here, Simmons. Looked like an offside. We'll have to see who the call was on there. Tarcia makes the call. It actually looks like it's against the Blues. Take the penalty, absolutely. Take the penalty, unless it's a first down. And you heard the call from the coaching staff, and that is take the penalty. Upper Canada, two infractions to start out this second half. Second down, St. Andrews. Yeah, definitely the Blues coaching staff will want to try to make sure their players are playing disciplined. Second down. Fake handoff. Running behind McLean is quarterback Schmidt. Moves the ball forward. Significant size difference with his offensive lineman there, number 67. You know, big, big boy there, Gabriel Wallace, the yeah. offensive tackle. And uh, with Ben Schmidt being able to run the ball like that, they actually have, it's like they have three running backs in the backfield. So he offers a nice running threat as well. First down, St. Andrews, threatening early in this third quarter. Back to pass, Schmidt looks to the side, incomplete. Second down. Talking to Coach Len Gurr prior to the game, he was saying to me that in the first two games, the regular season games that St. Andrews had with Upper Canada, that St. Andrews lost in the categories of turnovers and penalties. And he was hoping that wouldn't be the case again in this championship. The first half uh, wasn't looking good for St. Andrews. But as you said, uh, the Blues have had two penalties on this uh, St. Andrews drive to help keep it alive. So it's something we'll definitely want to address. Second and 10, St. Andrews. Schmidt looks to the right, quick pass, gets his receiver taken down very quickly by two UCC defenders. Looks like it'll be third down and very short. McLean into the game, carrying the play from the coaching staff. I suspect there'll be no hesitation here on the part of the St. Andrews coaching staff. They'll be going for it with third and maybe half a foot. Key play for St. Andrews. Schmidt takes the ball. Hands off, looking, getting an opening. McLean, more than enough for the first down. St. Andrews has to be pleased with uh, the opening drive. Got a UCC player down on her knee there, training staff coming out. A little bit of cheering from the St. Andrews team in the first half. 
looked as if they were stunned by what occurred in that first two quarters of the game. Nice crowd of spectators from both St. Andrews and Upper Canada. Yeah, on this chilly fall day, you might uh, have thought that it would impact some of the fans, but uh, there are lots of people cheering on their respective sides here. And if you're hearing some emergency vehicles are just going by us on the main street, so people listening in, it has nothing to do with what's happening right here. 9.47 to go in this third quarter. Upper Canada, 23, St. Andrews, 5. However, St. Andrews with a nice drive. Just inside the UCC 15-yard line with a first down. Schmidt, number 14, gets the ball, looks to the right side, tucks it underneath, and tries to do what he did in the first half. Is successful, moving the yardsticks a bit. Just having a look there, David, at, uh, at the injured player who came off for, uh, for UCC. That's Hannibal de Poncier, uh, a real core of their defense defensive back position um, he actually did sustain a shoulder injury earlier on in the season it's unfortunate it looks like he's holding his shoulder again second down about seven yards to go for St. Andrews Schmidt hits the ball gives it to McLean eludes one tackler then gets taken down by three UCC defenders on the far side of the field Yep, Joseph Cammy involved in that play. It's enough for a first down. Let's go! Let's go! And David, I don't know if the, uh, the coaching staff was listening to you, but they do seem to be running the ball a lot more. They found something at halftime, probably, where reviewing the situation, they felt a strong offensive line could at least have some fun with a, a fairly smaller UCC defensive front four. We'll see what happens. Again, the handoff. In for the touchdown. First touchdown of the game for St. Andrews and the Saints. And it comes with eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Be interesting to see here if uh, St. Andrews elects to go for two or just uh, a single. An impressive drive by quarterback Schmidt and the offensive team. Getting accolades from the coaching staff as they come off the side. Looks like they are just going to go for one. But yeah, you're right, David. Uh, the Saints have to be pleased with, uh, with the way they've opened this second half. Ball is down, up, and they're good for the conduit. So it is 23 for UCC. A dozen, 12 for St. Andrews. Eight minutes and one second to go in the third quarter. Starting to open up just a little bit as we anticipated in the second half. Question now is on the kickoff, can UCC respond? And if so, how effectively? And we did, uh, we did very explicitly state that we were likely to see a very exciting second half. And if that opening drive by St. Andrews is any indication of that, we will be definitely seeing more scoring. The Blues hoping that they can respond here in kind, as you just mentioned. Dave Brown, who's not only the head coach for Upper Canada, also responsible for the defense. And he's having a chat with some of his defensive players right now to figure out what went wrong to start this third quarter. You don't want to let St. Andrews take advantage of opportunities because they could come back and burn you quickly. They're too good a team. Yep. Whistle goes, we're all ready for the kickoff, and it's a short one. Takes one bounce. Going from one side to another, looking for an opening, finally gets one, and that's Adam Sellen. Yeah, that's Adam Sellen with, with actually two very good returns back to back there. Returned the opening one after he had bobbled it and then uh, made some positive yardage there. He's playing his last football game with the Blue. Yeah, he's a. Uh, he also plays uh, 
varsity basketball. So that's what he'll be uh, busy with uh, next term. And I guess somewhere in between a little bit of academics. Is that right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Graduating in June, he'll want to leave with memories of a victory in a championship. But we've got a long way to go. It's That's at the 45-yard right. line of UCC. First down for the Blues. Fading back, finally passing, and he gets Tucker. It was a... Uh, no, it wasn't. It, I thought it was Tucker, but it was number 20. Hugh Smith. It was actually a, a very well-read play by Walter Carabin there. He saw the uh, screen developing, stuck with the runner, and uh, Took managed him for a to loss. tackle him for a loss. That's right. UCC. Second down. Sorry there, Scott. UCC will just want to try to keep this drive going. Not have two and out. Second down, it looks like about 18. Jay Williams hands the ball off, playing it safe. They got the yards back that they lost, and a few more, but it's still not enough. Sets up a kicking situation, a punting. Third down. I mean, David, you certainly have far more experience with this than than I do, but uh, you know, high school sports, it's all about momentum, isn't it? And, uh, it turned and we, very quickly. We see momentum changes and shifts, and often it's who has the momentum near in the end of a tight game that'll win that. Snap. And the kick coming over here to the side. Very short. Shanked off. Yeah, out of bounds there. Connor McKinney, under a little pressure as the St. Andrews player was advancing, but St. Andrews is going to start with some pretty decent field position here. Not only is his dad the principal watching, but his grandfather is here, also taken in the game. You think it's time for Grandpa to have a little chat with his grandson? <laughs> well, he's actually had some pretty solid kicks. That was uh, just one that, uh, that got away, and that'll happen, as we know. The wind changing direction very quickly from left to right across the field. St. Andrews now in possession. They scored the last time they had the ball. They're on the 53. And there's the handoff. And running out of bounds, Dre Simmons. Being cheered on by his teammates and fans on the other side. This is a kid that Coach Len Gurr said at the beginning of the game, as he goes, we go. Problem was in the first half, he wasn't doing anything. Yeah, and that you're right, that was probably his first biggest gain. And as I mentioned earlier, looks like there may be a bit of a momentum shift here in favor first, of the Saints. First down St. Andrews, they're on the upper Canada 43 yard line, moving the ball again. Simmons grabbed and not going far at all. Pierce Gould. Yeah, with playing, the tackle there. Playing offense and defense, both sides. A gain of about six yards there. St. Andrew finding success with keeping it on the ground. I guess the wind plays a factor. They're going to try to air the ball out as well. St. Andrew's now looking into the sun. Second down and four. Hands off. Again, it's Simmons. Tried the left side in the last play. Now he goes to the right side. Seems to have enough for a first down. The sticks are being moved. And now the thing is reversed, as, as we were talking about earlier, Scott. It's quiet on the UCC side. And there's a fired up St. Andrew's team and spectators. Yeah, and, and one thing we uh, talked about, David, is, is I wonder if uh, the fact that the Blues lies, uh, defensive linemen, pretty much every one of them goes both ways. So tiredness and fatigue may be playing a factor. Simmons looks up the middle, instead goes to the right, dances around, gets a few yards. And pure school again with the tackle. Gain of five. But it's often as a... 
as fatigued as high school athletes may be, when that uh, when that adrenaline kicks in, uh, they manage, often manage to overcome that. And I suspect that UCC Blues are going to try to battle through any fatigue they may be experiencing. Shadows are the backs of St. Andrews. Number 14, Ben Schmidt. High snap. And a key play. It's a big play by Jose Guerra. McLean took one step, and then he saw White and went down. Makes it a third down with about eight yards to go. Three minutes and five seconds to go in this third quarter. Upper Canada ahead by 11, 23 to 12. Two touchdowns in the first half by Rashid Tucker. I'd say this is a pivotal play, David, right here. Joshua Archibald also getting a touchdown for UCC just before the half. High snap again, bobbled. Simmons. That is a key stop for UCC, David. Big play, sure. turnover on downs. And again, right, that uh, exchange between center and quarterback. We've seen that a uh, couple of times wobbled. A couple of times. Clearly has a big impact. Coaching staff for St. Andrews figuring that they weren't going to gamble with the possibility of a field goal attempt with less than three minutes to go in this third quarter and the wind. They figured they'd try to keep it on the ground. Yep. Well, as you say, the, the wind is, uh, it, it, it's tough to predict. It actually kind of looks like it's swirling out there. It's so. one way and then the other way. You're yep. right. First down, Upper Canada. Williams, hands off. Looks like Rashid Tucker is a ball carrier again. It's definitely turning into the Tucker versus Simmons running game. Yeah, about uh, maybe six yards there on that carry. Rashid Tucker having, uh, you would say, a fairly good day today for the UCC Blues. Yeah, I'd like to see the stats on, uh, on Rashid's carries. He's got a lot of touches and uh, a lot of yards to, uh, to complement those touches. Williams with two backs behind him, two receivers on the right. He's looking on the right, finds Archibald. And Archibald is in pain as he goes down just in front of the UCC bench. Yeah, trainer the right there. Ball and he sort of went down in a strange fashion. He did. It looks like they were uh, having a look at his left leg. UCC does get the first down on the catch. Josh having one touchdown called back in the first half. And then just before the break, the intermission scored one to put Upper Canada ahead. 23 to 5, and people started wondering was this an early sign of a blowout? But you can't really call it in the game of high school football because stranger things do happen. And St. Andrews started the second half putting up seven very quickly. Yeah, and then that uh, high snap over the head allowed UCC to stop the third down attempt by the Saints and uh, here we have the ball first and 10 for UCC ball on their 35 or just inside their 35 yard line blues and white with navy blue moving left to right Williams goes back hands off Tucker following one blocker but he doesn't get too far yeah a little counter there to try to mix up the Saints but they read it well and Stopped Rashid for a two-yard gain. UCC defeated St. Andrews 15-11, the first time these two schools met, a regular season game. And then in the second half of the home-and-home, 
Again, it was a victory, Upper Canada 8-4, right here at the Oval of Upper Canada. And then they went on to defeat Trinity in the semifinal to head into this championship with a 6-1 record. Yeah, it's been a very successful season for the Blues. They'd obviously like to cap it off with a final victory here today. Second down, and there's a flag. Appears to be a time count violation. Scott, how difficult is it to attract students to Upper Canada College? And not just a student, you're looking for a specific kind of individual. Yeah, we're, uh, we're actually very fortunate in that regard, David. We, we have a... Um, we have a lot of uh, uh, a variety of students applying to the school. Uh, we do have the International Baccalaureate program as our academic program, um, which is highly regarded, and, and that's actually one of the drawing features, as well as our facilities here. We're, we're very fortunate in that regard. Outstanding uh, athletic facilities, baseball diamond, hockey rinks, gyms, football field. We'll see what happens here. Second down, UCC, Williams. It's a great catch there by number 87, Adam Sellen, who's uh, likely in for the injured, um, uh, the injured Josh Archibald. We're talking about students and several of them on this UCC roster. Alex Alfaro, backup quarterback from Mexico. Alexander Kazakov, defensive lineman from Russia. Oscar Perilera. Hope that's pronounced correctly. Mm -hmm. Place kicker from Spain. And Jose Guerrero. Yep. Who hasn't left the field. You're right. And and from Ecuador. And and David, for many of our many of these boys, whether they've been uh, sort of relocated here and are day students, uh, you know, due to sort of parent jobs and whatnot, or whether or not they're boarders, for some of them, um, for the guys you just mentioned, it's their first time they've ever experienced football and, uh, and, and being part of, uh, of a sport like this. And uh, it, it's really exciting to see those boys uh, come on as, uh, as athletes and, and really develop a passion for the game of football here. The little pause in action here is because we've come to the end of the third quarter. Upper Canada leading 23 to 12 over St. Andrews. Upper Canada looking for a fourth consecutive league championship and St. Andrews of course trying to put an end to it. UCC will go from the right side of the field to the left into the sun for this final 15 minute quarter. The only scoring in this second half, a touchdown. It's a very by, big play here. By St. Andrews, Ian McLean. Let's see what happens. Third down and inches from the 45 of UCC. Maybe trying to draw the Saints offside. Williams keeps the ball. It looks like he has enough for a first down. Tucked it underneath, stuck his helmet down, and just followed his offensive line, who seemed to have a little bit of uh, easiness getting through that very heavy front wall of St. Andrews. Yeah, the uh, O-line just put a big lean on there, and the Blues are able to sustain this drive. And most important, have the clock tick away. Yeah, that's right. First down, Upper Canada at their 46-yard line. Looking for a receiver. And just off the fingertips. And Campbell Burgess. Sort of running a, uh, an inside route there. Jay Williams, a quarterback number six for UCC. Tough looking into the sun and then having a receiver run out and then turn back and wait for that pass. Yeah, coverage was good there on the Saints part too. Uh, Campbell did have a, a couple of hands on it, but tough ball to bring in under those circumstances for sure. One good thing about this game in addition to everything else we've seen is the number of injuries that have been kept down. Maybe yep. it's the weather, maybe it's the conditioning, maybe it's a combination of things, but you don't want to see these young high school kids getting hurt and severely hurt. Yeah, you're right. Blue's going to the air again. Incomplete. Third down, punting team comes in. UCC defense called to the task, and St. Andrew's offense fired up, hoping to add 
points and cut this 11 point lead that UCC has. A lot of chatter on the far side as the spectators from both schools seem to be getting a little closer. Uh, typically, I think that does happen. Good crowd out from, uh, from UCC. St. Andrews Snap. traveled up. Takes a few steps. That gets a nice kick away. Picked up at the 23 and is tackled almost immediately by a swarm of UCC defenders. Check out the Upper Canada College website under athletics for a full list of sports, schedules, activities, and I was quite fortunate to be involved in a series of stories on Upper Canada grads and where they are today and what they're doing. A lot of them, Scott, have one thing in common, and that is some wonderful years they spent as a student at UCC. Yeah, certainly what we hear from, uh, from our boys who have graduated old boys is, is just the time that they spent here, a very special time for their life. First down, Schmidt hands off, Simmons hit high and also low. You know, David, you mentioned um, uh, our athletics website and whatnot. Uh, just wanted a uh, put a shout out to our uh, our other teams who competed this past term. Our varsity soccer won the uh, CISA championship yesterday against. Uh, they were playing uh, St. Mike's and managed to pull that out. And our uh, varsity volleyball team lost to St. Mike's in the final. So a successful term for our sports teams. Second down pass. Caught, far side of the field. Good enough for a first down. St. Andrews moving the ball. Certainly St. Andrews has to be pleased with uh, coming out and scoring on that first drive. Hoping to put something together here as well. And obviously the Blues are going to do all they can to try to stop that. 11.52 left in this fourth quarter. St. Andrews with the ball. Hand off on the far side to Andre Simmons. And he piles up the yard. And David? Moving, moving the sticks once again. Sorry, sorry. Scott. Yep. David, I was just going to say kudos to you. You uh, had suggested that St. Andrews needs to get the ball to their star running back, Audrey Simmons, more, and certainly it looks like that's what they're doing. It's paying off. Well, they're now into UCC territory with a first down at the 52-yard line. They need points, but they need points quickly in this final quarter. Again, Simmons with the ball right up the middle, twists, turns, gets knocked around, leans forward, falls down, and gets another first down right in front of his St. Andrews spectator. They had two buses come down from Aurora today. Yeah, and they're cheering on their, their Saints. That was a great run by Andre Simmons. Again, uh, UCC tacklers needing to wrap, especially with a, uh, a quality runner like Andre. St. Andrews first down on the 38-yard line of Upper Canada. Again, the pitch, Simmons. Tackle there at that time, Pierce Gould. Pierce Gould, sorry, and on the uh, in the tackle there. As was uh, Maxime Barbeau. You might need uh, you might need a couple of guys to try to take him down. Actually, it was uh, Joseph Cami, I think, who was in on that in on that tackle number twenty-five. Second down. Ben Schmidt over his center. Again, hands off, this time to McLean, who just came into the game with a play from the bench. Gets over the 30-yard line. We'll bring close, up third down. Close to a first down, but still short. Schmidt's looking to the side, Len Gurr checking the playbook. I imagine there's no hesitation here with nine minutes, 45 seconds left to play. No field goal. They will try to keep the drive alive. 
key play here. Third down. They need two to keep moving the sticks. Schmidt fakes it to McLean, keeps the ball, runs right up the middle. Touchdown. You hear the crowd. He did that in the first half, yeah. and he's doing it again in the second half. And it's clearly a design play that they have there, David, with uh, with number uh, 28, Ian McLean, out as almost the fullback lead block. And um, the quarterback, Ben Schmidt, will just go in behind him as if it was a designed running play. Schmidt with the touchdown. Both St. Andrews touchdowns coming on the ground. Actually, four of the five touchdowns in the game on the ground. Archibald, the only one scoring on a pass. Yep. 924, going for the two point convert. Schmidt fakes the handoff, keeps the ball, passes it out to Simmons. Simmons is in. That cuts it to a field goal. But very quickly, St. Andrews has come back in the second half. Shutting out UCC, 9.24 to go, and it's 23 to 20. A well-executed play there with the option as Ben Schmidt was running. Saw that uh, he was drawing a lot of tacklers in and was able just to uh, pitch the ball out to Adri. Well, we said it in the first half. The second was going to be something exciting, as usually exciting as usually what happens when these two teams get together. In the first half, St. Andrews is flat. Upper Canada just was taking them off guard, had a 23 to five lead, and it's completely reversed. The motivation is turned around. The heads are hanging a bit down at UCC. And the screaming you're hearing is coming from St. Andrews. Yeah, you're right. The fans will need to rally around their UCC players to try to get them back in this game. Certainly lots of time left with nine minutes and 24 seconds left, but UCC does need to respond here. Ball is in the air. And deep in his end, looking for a couple of blocks and taken down. Dangerous territory, Scott Cowie. All you need is one slip, one turnover, one ball to be snapped the wrong way, and welcome to high school football. That's right. Yeah. Juwan Edgel there. Hoping to uh, make more of the situation, but uh, was pinned deep, and uh, the Blues are going to need to really do all they can to, uh, to make some gains here. One good sign we're seeing is number 84 for UCC, Joshua Archibald, back in the game. We went down on the sidelines after reception. We were a little concerned about the pain. But he's back in there. I guess it's all hands on deck for the last 10 minutes. It is, and he can be a very serious threat. Certain the Saints are aware that he's back on the field. First down, UCC trying to get out from deep in their end. And there's the pitch out. Rashad Tucker gets up to the 20, maybe a little bit more. Trying to use some of that outside speed that we saw previously for Rashid. He's trying to get a spot as to the ball here. Looks like there may have been a flag down on the play there, David. Maybe a holding call? Just hitting on our side here. Yep. And that pushes the Blues back even further. Now they're inside their 10. First down from the nine yard line. Upper Canada. Trying to get out of a mess. St. Andrews wanting the ball. The Blues ahead by three. Williams, sun glaring in his eyes, goes back in his end zone. Quick pass to Archibald on the far side. Looks like he's close but not enough. He's about a yard short of a first down, but it's a nice gain. Yeah. Uh, da dangerous play, Scott. Yeah. When you're throwing the ball at open side, there's nobody there. That's Picks right. off, goodbye. Yeah. Certainly the Blues uh, feel a little bit more comfortable, a little more breathing room. 
would love to be able to keep this drive alive with a yard here to get a first down. Less than a yard, it looks like. Second down. From their own 23-yard line with 8.22 to go in this fourth quarter. Williams hands off to Tucker. He's got it out. Scott Tucker Moore broken the line. Side. Clear to the 55, there he 50, goes. down to the 45, and knocked out of bounds. Huge play for Upper Canada and Rasheed Tucker. Knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line. No flags, no cloth on the field. Now that's quite a play. A huge gain for Rashid. And uh, certainly the Blues breathing a little easier now, given that they were pinned back behind their own five-yard line. And haven't taken a penalty to get them back even further. Time ticking away, 7.33 in this fourth quarter. Points are important. UCC ahead by a field goal. Williams looks over the defense, waiting for the snap. Hands it off. No, he fakes it. Keeps the ball. Tucks it in. Goes to the far side of the field. Good job for uh, Jay to make something out of nothing there. Surprised me. One hand, I thought he had handed the ball off, and there it was in his other hand, going to the far side of the field. And he managed to gain about uh, seven yards on that. You said something earlier, Scott, about how important it was for UCC to respond after St. Andrews scored their first touchdown of the game early in the second half, and they didn't. And then when the second touchdown came from St. Andrews, you again mentioned that it was critical for UCC to reply. They heard you this time. <laughs> well, again, right, we talked about momentum, and it does look like there may be a bit of a momentum shift here, and UCC will want to capitalize on that. First down, Williams, number six, quarterback. The 21, hands the ball off, Tucker. No, that's um, Archibald. Archibald. Yep. Josh Archibald with another significant gain. It was actually a, a pretty similar play to the one that they scored on in the first half that was called back on a hold. Seems to have similar speed to Rashid Tucker. Number uh, number 65 for the uh, St. Andrews Saints. Gregor McKellar down on a knee right now. Good to see him walking off. One of their captains. I imagine he's their biggest captain too. He's also a pretty good bagpiper. One of the best for his age class I've in the country. That. Yeah, yeah, it's very impressive. And that's what gets me about a lot of these uh, these athletes that we see, David, is just the, the talent that they have outside the field and, and beyond the court and things like that. First down, Upper Canada. Needing to score points. Williams hands the ball off, going right up the middle into a wall of St. Andrews defenders. And uh, clearly Rashad Tucker's uh, is not afraid of contact there. He had the option to maybe go left and see if he could break one outside, but uh, keeping the ball inside, and maybe that was intentional to try to keep that clock running. 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Upper Canada hanging on to a three-point lead. They did lead 23-5 to at halftime. It's now 23-20. Chance of goal offense from the Blues. The defense yelling for St. Andrews. Number six, Williams throwing side sideline and a we touchdown see, pass. We do see the officials' hands raised there. No flags. And again, a beautifully executed passing play there. You saw that uh, Jay Williams released the ball even before Juwan had made his cut and a perfectly timed play right in the corner. Managed to cross that line. Touchdown UCC. Juwan Edgehill with the touchdown ran up the hill there to say hello to some of his fans. Schoolmates as well. And waiting for the convert attempt, which is up, and it's good. A very, very important series. UCC marching the length of the field after being hemmed in with a penalty. 
motivation on the part of St. Andrews. Three-point lead for UCC, and they respond. And they respond big with 5.48 to go in this fourth quarter. And again, the, uh, the score made by UCC there certainly had an impact on, on the St. Andrews fans who aren't as vocal as they were before. UCC fans charged up. But again, David, we've seen stranger things, and we've got five minutes and 48 seconds left. That's a lot of time in, in Canadian football. Upper Canada College with touchdowns, two of them by Rashid Tucker and Joshua Archibald just before the half, 16 seconds, to give UCC a 23-5 lead. And then in the second half, Ian McLean and Ben Schmidt with touchdowns for St. Andrews, pulling them even closer until this touchdown now by Juwan Edgehill with less than six minutes in the fourth quarter. It's going to be uh, an interesting close to this championship game. We're at Upper Canada College in Toronto. Sun moving very quickly and in the eyes of UCC. David Grossman along with Scott Cowie. We hope you're enjoying this game. They fake the reverse here, St. Andrews does, on the run back. And a good tackle by Lucas Harvey there. On another Lucas, LeBriere from St. Andrews with the run back. St. Andrews taking possession, first down from their own 39 yard line, slightly off to the right side of the field. Big series. I would imagine St. Andrews is now not even thinking about a kicking game. Well, I was going to say, you know, this is, uh, this is where the clock comes into play. St. Andrews has made some gains on the ground, but do they have time to score 10 points on the ground? Ben Schmidt, quarterback, hands the ball. No, fakes it, keeps it himself. Goes up the middle, slides down. 48-yard line. Just short, 47 of, of a first down. If it's not McLean or Simmons, Schmidt's doing it himself. You said it earlier, the threat of three running backs. Yeah, and the Blues are really going to need to try to clamp down that run because it looks like the Saints have uh, a solid running game going. Second in the yard, McLean trying to lean forward. I don't think he's got it. Nope. Depending on the, where the spot is here. They may bring in the chains. No, it looks like uh, third down it is. Ball is placed. Oh, they are going to bring in the chains, I think, just to measure up, make sure. Hey, hey, hey. Referee Chris Walker saying, let's not take any chances. This is not a regular season game. Yeah, and uh, Saints coaches probably appreciative of that just to make sure. But by the spot of the ball, it did look like he was short. You're going to hear a cheer one way or another. Very close. It actually, uh, from, my, from my vantage point, it looked like maybe an inch or two, David. So. Both teams having big plays in this game. Significant turnovers, also having an impact, as penalties as well. Third down, could be a key play, probably is going to be. They're going to measure it again. Okay. Hmm. Umpire Greg Aletto standing, grabbing the chains. Oh, looks Chris like Walker. they have it. Looks like they have a first down. A little discussion going on. Yeah. Wonder why they measured it twice. First time it was short, second time. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it looks as though Saints have been awarded the first down. First down, St. Andrews on their own 49-yard line. 4.38 to go in this fourth quarter. UCC, 30-20. Schmidt goes for the pass. Two defenders connect. It's incomplete. Yeah, we've got an injury down there. It looks like Connor Charton. 
is down for UCC. He actually uh, bumped into his own player there, Adam Sellen, because they both went up for that uh, free ball. And uh, I think St. Andrews should be feeling fortunate that that ball wasn't picked wasn't off. Wasn't picked off. Let's hope that uh, UCC player Connor is okay. An opportunity for St. Andrews to go over the plays on what they have in store. Ben Schmidt coming over to have a chat with head coach Len Gurr. We've got the message of what to do. Time for a quick drink. Dylan Henderson. One of the key members of any team is the guy who always brings out the water. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the, the important of team play is to, is to recognize that everybody has an important role and plays an important role. They're still looking at Connor Charton. As the UCC defensive team are all in a huddle on one knee. 4.27 to go in this fourth quarter. He's getting up. You hear the applause. And that's that's very nice to see, David. Just uh, just the sportsmanship displayed uh, on both teams' part there, both the St. Andrews bench. we got some hand clapping there and from their fans as well. Charton coming off with a little help. Strength and conditioning coach uh, Matt Verboom out there to check up on Connor being walked off by the trainer this morning to I'm sure ask him if he knows the day of the week a lot of chatter on the far side between spectators from both teams the UCC flags blue and white second down 10 to go for St. Andrews on their 49 Schmidt looks to the right side throws and it's incomplete over the head of their intended receiver setting up a third and ten with 413 to go Scott obviously they're not gonna kick no no for sure and uh, not sure what happened on that play there if it was just a miscue but um, ball was thrown and uh, receiver really wasn't in the vicinity of where the ball landed number of Canadian University Football coaches checking in as they usually do. Yep. This time of year, season's over for many of them. I've seen representatives. Looking, sorry, from Western. Looking for talent. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. Western Queens. Third and down. It. Key play coming up here for St. Andrews. They have to convert. Schmidt looks. It's a big play, David. You heard the response from the UCC fans. Yep. Number Schmidt was sacked, Scott. Number 58, Loke Martin, was in on that, as I believe Pierce Gold was as well. Turnover on downs. That, Yet another one. That's a very important defensive play, and, and I'm certain that uh, head coach and defensive coach Dave Brown of the UCC Blues has to be very pleased with that. You know, in a play like that, David, although, uh, you know, the linemen uh, who make ultimately get the sack often get credit for it. A lot of it probably has to do with the DBs who were covering the St. Andrews receivers and there wasn't much there for uh, for Schmidt. And he took it with to. the idea of running as yep. he did and has done yep. successfully. And this time, couldn't break the tackles. First down, UCC. Williams calling a timeout. Thought he'd draw them offside. Didn't work. Saw the clock going down, figured okay, I've got to make a little trip to the sidelines. Have a chat with the coaching staff and figure out just exactly what they want to do on this sequence of plays. Christian Hefford and the offensive coordinator having a chat with them. Yeah, and uh, you know, typically you wouldn't want to burn a timeout there, but it did look like they were trying to maybe draw the Saints off offside. They've done that twice earlier in the game, trying to gain a few extra yards as they have the ball here at midfield. Williams gets the message back into the huddle. UCC with a 10-point lead. 
the last three minutes and 37 seconds of the fourth quarter. UCC hoping to cap the season with a championship and it would be their fourth. Only lost this year to St. Michael's by one point. I was going to say it was a very close game that one was. And that was down the street. Yep. First down. Tucker. Tries to gain some yardage. Being dragged down by one defender. Took three of them to take him down. Yeah, and the Blues would like to be able to get a another run like that and gain a first down here. Again, David, with three minutes left, there's still some time here. Blues certainly can't sit back on their heels and, and think this one's won. Second down, five yards to go for UCC on the 42-yard line of St. Andrews, heading right into the sun. Williams to Archibald, hands it off to the far right side, gets by one defender. This will be an interesting spot here, David. They should give him forward progress. And he might be close to a, th oh, it is, they do mark it as a third down, so. They're marking the ball at the 39 yard line. He had to get to the 36 to move the chains. UCC will punt. Here's where you just want to make a, a good transition from the center to the punter and get the ball away. And you want to make sure that ball goes to the St. Andrews end of the field and not get caught up by the That's wind. Right. Three minutes, signal. Being whistled in by referee Chris Walker. The snap is back, the punt is up. Nice kick. A very nice kick. Taken by St. Andrews at their 12 yard line. And good, good coverage there as well. Pierce Gould down there to make the, uh, to make the play. Two and a half minutes left. Scott, we've talked about the offense and the defense of both teams, but we haven't said enough about the special teams. And there was a clear example of how these guys were able to get down there and hem in the St. Andrews runner. Otherwise, he had territory on both sidelines. You're right, and we know that uh, he's a threat as well, their runner. So uh, a great kick by Connor McKinney to, get, to give the hang time enough for uh, the UCC defenders to get down there, make the play. First down, St. Andrews, deep in their end. They need a lot of mileage with 2.30 to go. Schmidt throwing this side of the field, up in the air and tapped down by Upper Canada's Yep. Number 16. Number 16, Calvin Jeffrey. Number one for the Saints. Just pleading to the ref. Pass interference. Looking for a call. Would, wasn't going to take any of it. Didn't, didn't look as though there was any contact there prior to the ball. Second down, St. Andrews. They have two more shots to move the chains. They have the ball on their 15-yard line. Ben Schmidt gets the snap. Quarterback, number 14, again throwing this side of the field. Incomplete. Ball ended up right here on a table. Nice reception by you, Scott Kelly, on three <laughs> bounces. Not quite. <laughs> so it's a third down. Saints uh, player number one, Lucas LeBriar. A little shaken up. He's about to take a knee and I guess desperately wants to stay in there. Schmidt went to him on the first one where he was hoping to get a flag in his favor. It didn't work. Schmidt went back to him again deep. This one didn't work either. So it's now third down. St. Andrews needing 10 yards to move the sticks and stay in contention. Trailing. 30 to 20 with 2.18 to go in this fourth quarter. We're coming to you from Upper Canada College in Toronto. CIS AA Championship. Schmidt throws, has his 
receiver, steps out of bounds. Did he get the 10? Looks like they did. Where they're marking it is good oh. enough for a first down. Yep. There's a little bit of a discussion taking place between back umpire Bob Pulowski and referee Chris Walker. I didn't see a flag Was there a down. flag somewhere? But, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure. Greg Aletto was in on the discussion, the umpire. Maybe they were just trying to figure out where they're going for dinner when this is all over. <laughs> no, there was a flag down. Oh. First down, St. Andrews. Hmm. Not quite sure what that call was, but uh, the end result is St. Andrews has a fresh set of downs. They needed 10, they got it, and a little bit more. First down, 2.12 to go. They need 10 points, they need to control the ball. Schmidt hands off, he's still on his feet, still dancing as Simmons. And although we ate up some clock there just on the run, he was able to get out of bounds, stop the clock. This is one of these rare occasions in two years where Andre Simmons, who has 45 touchdowns for St. Andrews in two years, has not scored a touchdown today. He's got a two-point convert, but has not got a touchdown. Yeah, and they've certainly gone to him more in the second half. Certainly. Schmidt checking over the defense. First down. Two receivers. Three receivers wide. Tucks the ball in. Still on his feet. Misses two tackles. And gets over the center field line. Back up on his feet quickly. Looks like uh, the Saints are going to go no huddle here. Try to have quick ball. Again, number 14 Schmidt showing his threat as a runner. First down, St. Andrews. Hands off to McLean, right up the middle. Down to the 45. Down to the 40. Where are, where are they marking it? Now, halfway in between. Again, no huddle. 42 yard line of UCC. It's first down. St. Andrews marching the ball. The clock is a factor. Schmidt. Pitches out. McLean on the right side by two tacklers, still on his feet, finally wrestled down to the ground. Yeah, and with the time that uh, it takes to reset the ball here, um, there is 90 seconds left. There's still, there's still time for uh, the Saints without having to use their timeouts. I don't know, there was a timeout from the refs here. I don't know if they're going to bring in the chains again. To, Looks like they are. Second down, about a yard. They looks as if he's short. Upper Canada, 30. St. Andrews, 20. This is the championship game. All the marbles. UCC hoping to make it four in a row. Twice over St. Andrews. St. Andrews hasn't tasted the championship trophy in a while. Both teams. First down. David, we've seen this scenario before with uh, little time remaining and uh, one team, whether it's the Blues or the Saints in years past, gaining momentum. It'll be an exciting finish as always. We'll let you watch and listen as we've got a minute 30 left in this fourth quarter. St. Andrews needs to score. Schmidt keeps the ball, tucks it in. Again, sticks right up the middle. Fall ball. Ball. Looks as if UCC's it looks recovered. Looks as though UCC has recovered. Looks like number 66. Sorry, 67, Jose Guerra. I'm just trying to confirm that. The celebration's going on. And David, with a minute and 17 right. seconds left, that could be, could be the game for St. Andrews. There's a flag. It looks as if St. Andrews still has
Interesting that Carrera, 67, turned around and stared at Gabriel Wallace has the same number, 67, for St. Andrews, and then threw him the wall. Yeah, uh, looks like the, the Blues have picked up some yardage there. I don't know if there was some words exchanged or whatever, but there's a discussion going on with head coach Len Gurr, nice who seems very upset, and Chris Walker, the referee, and Greg Aletto, the umpire, Bob Pulowski, the back umpire, uh, escorted Len Gurr, and now there's an objectionable conduct. Penalty has been issued on St. Andrews number 21. Yep. And, uh, and that's probably a little bit of the discussion. Walter yeah. Caravan, the captain, yeah. or the key defensive lineman. Certainly, One, certainly disappointing for the St. Andrews Saints. You can see why. Difficult emotions for them. Ball kept on the ground wisely. Williams to Tucker. Not Timeout sure. being called with 113 to go. And Scott, I just want to say a huge thanks to you once again and the entire team of folks behind the scenes at Upper Canada for giving us the opportunity to bring to you the championship game of this CIS AA football final for another year. And to Peter and all the production staff bringing you the action cameras. Yeah, it's uh, certainly with a minute and 13 seconds left. The Blues keep this one on the ground. Um, certainly, I think they'd like to pick up a first down if they could to, uh, to really seal the deal. But um, it certainly looks good from their perspective at this point, and you can see that on the, uh, on the sidelines for the Saints. Compare that to the upbeat Blues sideline. Both principals are now in a heavy discussion from St. Andrews in Upper Canada. Just waiting to shake hands. Tucker with the ball, heads forward, then goes down on the 45 yard line. 107 to go in this fourth quarter. Another timeout called by Len Gurr. If you're just joining us, you've missed a whale of a game. 23 to 5, Upper Canada in the first half. Convincing lead, looking like it was going to be a blowout. But St. Andrews wouldn't have any part of it. Yeah. And came back in the second half. Touchdowns by Ian McLean and Ben Schmidt. Making the game close. Got to within a field goal until Juwan Edgehill of UCC decided, you know what, it's time for me to get a touchdown. And he did to join the crew of Josh Archibald and Rasheed Tucker with a pair of touchdowns in this game. It's been back and forth, yep. but the lead has always been with Upper Canada right from the beginning. Yeah, and David, as the Blues set up here to punt, I want to remind folks, we've got a minute and seven seconds left, and only it's, it's only a two-score game. Crazier things have happened in, CF, in uh, Canadian football. The punt. Is up, they gets get a good one, away. bounces to the left side and out of bounds. Ball is going to be marked somewhere between the 30 and 35. We'll get an exact count in a minute. But an exciting game. The weather was ideal. You had your action, both sides, turnovers, as we said, penalties. Exciting plays, big plays, momentum changers for both teams. Yep, and and certainly St. Andrews will be looking to get a real quick score here, do an onside kick and see what they can uh, they can make of it. And obviously the Blues just want to keep their heads and uh, and play good defense, prevent any of that from happening. First down, St. Andrews on their 31. Schmidt looks, passes, almost intercepted. Yeah, great defensive play there by Joseph Cammy. He's been wanting one badly in this game. Yeah, DB on the left side there. UCC fans, spirited, just trying to uh, 
spur their team on. Let's go, Sack! Let's go! Second down, 31 yard line, St. Andrews. With possession, they trail by 10. 57 seconds left in this fourth quarter of the championship game. Schmidt gets the ball again, looks for his receivers. Throws downhill, way over the head of his intended receiver. And that was number 21, Gianluca Iantuano. Well, sorry, David, it was Walter Caravan, right? For the, uh, for the Saints. Right, yeah. wrong, wrong team. That's, that's all right. A little bit though. of the excitement. <laughs> it's about to spill over. It is, yes. In the next 50 seconds on the other side of the field. As the flags are being waved, UCC fans ready to jump onto the field in celebration. Schmidt, again, looking, passing, getting his receiver, and tossed out of bounds. And that will be a turnover on downs. They didn't make enough for a fresh set of downs there. Joseph Cammy was the one who Oh, my, my mistake. It, uh, it is a fresh set of downs. I thought he was short there. He sees Cammy knocked him out of bounds. So they keep the drive alive, the Saints do, with 45 seconds left. St. Andrews lines up with a first down at their 42. Schmidt, again to this side of the field. And going out of bounds to Simmons. Had a whale of a game, but he hasn't seen the end zone as far as touchdowns. Yeah, the Saints are advancing the ball here. You do have to wonder if there's just not enough time for them to be able to score 10 points with 41 seconds left. Ball at center field. Schmidt. Keeps the ball, tucks it in, himself. looked for a receiver, was going to go down, now he is taken down. I'm not certain the Saints have a timeout there, so that's, uh, they'll look to just get right on the ball again, once it's reset. The ball is on the 49-yard line of UCC. Clock starts again. Schmidt, to the other side of the field. Trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock. He does. I think that was number 28, Ian McLean again. Taking it down to the 38-yard line, but the clock definitely a factor. Trailing by 10, 22 seconds to go. Want to congratulate both coaches, Dave Brown, at UCC and Len Gurr at St. Andrews and their coaching staff. Two great football teams in this championship game. Yep, great programs. We've been treated to a great game here. Schmidt looking for receiver. No, can't find anybody. Credit to UCC's defensive secondary. Keeps the ball and runs out of bounds. Stops the clock with 12 seconds to go. There is a story that we've seen most of this game, and that is Schmidt having trouble getting the ball to his receivers. It's just been blanket coverage from the defensive secondary of UCC, and he's had to eat the ball himself. Yep, and, uh, and you're right. Kudos go to the, the, the secondary, all the DBs and the safety there. Really not providing any opportunities there for uh, the Saints. Second down and five, St. Andrews, Schmidt looking to the left, throwing to the right. Second Touchdown! Down. Wow, was there some confusion there? St. Andrews clicks with five seconds to go. Just a little bit of a quiet suddenly yeah. that draped on this, as you said before, you never know what happens. Convert attempt, very important. 30 to 26 right now. Yep. The ball goes through, it makes it a three-point game. 
Ball's down, up, through. 30 to 27, don't go away. We can certainly anticipate what uh, play is next, David. With the onside kick. Five seconds to go, a little discussion going on between the coaching staff. Certain uh, UCC Blues will get uh, their hands team out there. Their receiving team with, uh, with full understanding that St. Andrews will be trying an onside kick, retain Scott, that ball. It's got a little bit of confusion on that last play with the two defensive secondary, uh, two backs, uh, staring and glaring up and that sun in their eyes. And yet it didn't seem to harm the St. Andrews receiver who caught the ball and everybody just wondered what happened. Yes, yeah. So let's set it up. Five seconds to go. UCC leads 30 to 27. St. Andrews is going to kick off. Obviously a short kick. The fans at the other side of the field ready to jump. Both teams trying to figure out who's going to get the ball. And ready to call into play is Chris Walker, the referee. We'll give you the last five seconds and you'll hear what happens as the ball just falls off the tee. A little anticlimactic, I think. Certainly the Saints looking for a miracle here. Get the ball back. UCC trying to recover, make sure that here they we go. pounce on that ball. Here comes the kick. Loose ball, Upper Canada recovers. UCC is on their 43-yard line, two seconds to go. And just Frustration on the part of the St. Andrews players. Yeah, uh, the Blues certainly will just simply take a knee here. The kick was intended to go right down the middle to their tall players and it just tipped off, rolled, and then two white shirts fell on it. Yeah. Now there's a little confusion. A little confusion with here. They want oh. a football. There that's, we go. That's, that would help. That's a good way to start the game again. Yeah. Two seconds to go, barring an infraction penalty. This will likely be the last play of this game in the championship and yet another outstanding football season for UCC and St. Andrews. Yeah. Whistles in. They might have to do that twice. Yeah. One second for that play. So it's now second down, zero on the clock. This is the last play. Takes a knee, Williams and the UCC Blues have won a fourth consecutive CISAA championship celebration. And there you see high school sports. St. Andrews team getting together. With the ceremonial handshake. I'm surprised the spectators are still at the far end and not on the field. Well, David, that's <laughs> that's intentional. We, uh, we let the boys know that uh, there would be um, handshakes to make and uh, championship presentations and whatnot to award gold and silver uh, medals. Uh, and it's glad, glad to see them respecting that. This is something I haven't seen in a while, a photograph, center field of the officiating crew. Hmm. So let's sum it up for you. This championship game is now in the history books. The final score, Upper Canada College, 30. St. Andrews College, 27, an exciting second half after UCC had jumped out into a 23-5 lead. Two touchdowns by Rashid Tucker. Josh Archibald with 16 seconds to go in the first half. As mentioned, 23-5, wondering if this is going to be a blowout or not. St. Andrews bounced back very quickly in the third quarter with Ian McLean's touchdown, then Ben Schmidt. A key factor, Andre Simmons did not get a touchdown in this game, probably for the first time in his short St. Andrews career as well. Juwan Edgehill with a touchdown. Late in the game, St. Andrews adds a touchdown, making it a three-point matchup. This one's over. 
Four consecutive championships for Upper Canada College. The handshaking going on at center field and the official presentation of the championship hardware. Brent McKay, the athletic director for UCC. It's been a lot of fun, Scott, once again. I agree, David. Thank you very much. We'll say goodbye to you from Upper Canada College in Toronto. Another victory for the UCC Blues. Thanks for joining us. My name is David Grossman.